So now we're going to talk about a high velocity, low amplitude or HVLA technique for the talus, or we could also rephrase that as an HVLA technique for the distal tibia. Uh, we're again talking about the same thing, depending on what specifically uh, we are paying attention to. So uh, for our dysfunction on this right side, we had said that we had an anterior talus, which was accompanied by um, or supported by increased plantar flexion and a restricted barrier in dorsiflexion. So for an anterior talus or a posterior distal tibia, our position for treatment is going to be uh, with contact anteriorly on the talus, and you have a couple different options in terms of your hand position. Uh, I prefer a position with my fingers lining up next to one another, with my uh, ring finger on the talus, and then the rest of my fingers uh, moving along uh, the metatarsals. My thumbs underneath the plantar surface of the foot, and uh, you also wanna make sure you kind of start a little bit lower, so kind of drop down a little bit lower, and then stand up as you dorsiflex and you'll be able to appreciate uh, where that barrier is. Now you don't wanna force it, you just wanna bring it up to where it naturally, uh, naturally stops. And then here you would also add a little bit of traction inferiorly. So I would lean back to add a little bit of traction while still inducing a little bit of this posterior dorsiflexion motion. So it's more of a circular motion rather than a straight up or down motion or a straight traction, um, uh, sorry, superior, inferior, or anterior, posterior motion. You can also contact by clasping your fingers uh, or interlacing your fingers and then making contact with one of your ring fingers on the talus. And then same thing with your, with your thumbs, uh, starting low, standing up and making some nice uh, uh, contact on the barrier and then leaning back to, tr to uh, apply some traction. Alternatively, you can use one hand on the talus, the other hand on the calcaneus like we did when we were uh, specifically evaluating uh, one leg for our uh, talus uh, and distal tibial dysfunction. And we would um, apply dorsiflexion until we get to that restricted barrier. From any of those positions, we could then employ our, uh, our high velocity, low amplitude thrust. So I'm gonna go back into my preferred position. So now in this position, it's really important for a high velocity, low amplitude thrust that your thrust is quick, high velocity, but soft, low amplitude. So the most important feature, the most important uh, element of your setup then is approximating your barrier effectively. So here we are, we set it up. We get to our dorsiflexion barrier. We lean back to provide a little bit of traction. We ask our patient to breathe in and breathe out. And we're gonna do it one more time. Breathe in and breathe out. At the end of that breath, we apply a quick, short, and, uh, and soft thrust posteriorly in that circular direction to enhance dorsiflexion through the somatic dysfunction barrier. So if we had the opposite dysfunction, so if we had a uh, posterior talus or an anterior distal tibia, depending on how you want to talk about it, uh, we would instead set ourselves up so that we could um, drive this uh, distal tibia posteriorly, while at the same time supporting our ankle so that our talus can move anteriorly. So our goal is to move the tibia posteriorly while we move the talus anteriorly. So we're gonna take one hand, put it under the calcaneus, let that rest right on the table. Also, we could add a little bit of traction as we do that. And we take our cephalad hand and we're going to put that at the end of the distal tibia, not on the talus, not on the foot and ankle. You can put it on the end of the distal tibia. And we're gonna be applying a posterior force of the distal tibia. And then we're gonna be asking our patient to take a breath in 
and out. And at the end of that breath, we would initiate a quick, short, posterior thrust through the distal tibia while maintaining our force posteriorly with our goal again of moving our distal tibia posteriorly while moving the, uh, the talus anteriorly. And remember, our thrust is a very small thrust, very short thrust, but a very quick thrust. And so our most important feature in terms of our setup is gonna then be approximating our barrier and then providing a small quick thrust through that barrier.